I believe passionately in mediation because I, I think it gives, it gives people the responsibility and empowers people to take control uh, of their own outcomes when they're in a conflict situation. And um, no matter how much we'd, we'd like to think the opposite, conflict is there all the time. Conflict is a part of everyday life. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. Um, it's more about how you manage the conflict and the kind of outcomes that you get. Because conflict can drive change, and sometimes change is important. Southwark Mediation Centre is one of the oldest mediation centres in the country. Uh, 25 years ago, we started by dealing with low-level disputes in our community. Since then, we've moved on to be dealing with cases of antisocial behaviour, um, hate crimes, any sort of dispute where people have fallen out with each other or communication has broken down. For us, it's about getting two people who are in a difficult situation to resolve the problem themselves without the trauma, without the expense, and without possibly the unsatisfactory outcome of going to court. We decided we wanted to do something around young people. We wanted to transfer the skills that we'd learned into uh, possibly dropping them into a school. This meant we trained um, about 20 young people in a particular school in South London. I um, am director of Key Stage 3 and um, for me, I could not do my job without Southern Mediation. Rather than just an extra service that looks good for the school, it actually does make a real big difference to the school. It really works, it's very successful here. Um, it, I think that's because it's a whole school approach. Everybody, everybody but everybody knows about it and everyone wants it to continue, hopefully. We're conscious that in schools, disputes happen all the time. Bullying takes place, people fall out with friends, fights take place. It becomes a very difficult situation because you're not prepared to stand down. You're not prepared to lose face and that becomes difficult. Ultimately, what happens then if it gets too heavy, people get excluded. The objective for this project is to train 16 people as apprentice mediators so they set up their own project within the school. They'll take referrals from teachers, they'll take self-referrals. So young people that are involved in conflict, whether it be fights or falling out with people, have the opportunity to sit in front of hopefully a group of 16 from this group to try and resolve it. It's a bit like a business. You're going to be running this service, you're going to be looking for referrals from all the population of the school, from the year sevens up. So when they're in disputes or in arguments or there's been trouble between them, they're having an opportunity to come to you. Now it's not going to take over, it doesn't mean that the teachers are not going to be involved anymore, they're going to run away and hide in the staff room. It's just going to be another option for resolving stuff that's going to be manned by you. I'll leave you with the last thought. People are always complaining about young people being not like they used to be badly behaved and all the rest of it. I think you know the answer to this question. Who are the most frequent victims of crime by young people? The answer is other young people. For the sixth formers, what it offers them is an opportunity to increase their skill set. They are trained for a two-week duration. They have to apply for the position. It's heavily applied for, so the competition is very, very tough. And they get the right candidates. So after their training, they are then obviously trained mediators within the college. I was sitting watching two boys, Liam and George, who kind of last time I looked, I was telling them to tuck their shirts in and put their blazers on. Here they were being, here they were being adults. And that's all that, that was. They were being adults and conducting, okay, it was role play, but you know, life is role play. Um, and they were being adults and conducting things in such an adult considered way at 17. First time I've had being a mediator has to be um, when I've had a big case with um, a large group of um, students and they had a conflict between each other and um, obviously um, like there was a lot of tension between it because it was a serious matter and they were very angry with them, each other so it was something that I felt a good achievement to know that I've helped them be able to squash the situation, to sort it out between themselves. Uh, from primary school, he was always top of the class. As soon as he joined secondary school, it just dropped. He, he was bottom of the class. His reading age dropped uh, well, considerably. That, that was a complete worry. He went to a couple of parents' evenings, and um, I, I couldn't put my finger on it, what was going on. And it actually turned out that he was being bullied for six, seven, eight months. And, and then I got a call from the head teacher, and the head teacher put me in contact with Suffolk Mediation. It wasn't a, 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 an official, like, uh, uniform like a police, and it wasn't like a teacher where you look up and you call them sir and miss. 
it was more like a, a friendly chat, but you, you, because of their professionalism in, in how they were trained, it seems like, and, and they were all, all very nice people, and it was like done on, on, on a family type of basis, you, you, you did feel that something was going to be done. I had a case to deal with quite, you know, a large number of girls, and I was with another adult, but I think they ended up listening to me more than they did with the adults. I didn't quite know why, but I think maybe because they could relate to me. The students that are in conflict um, will be more open and honest with a young person, knowing full well that they've got no authority to do anything about it. Um, but if a teacher were to ask, you know, did you say that to little Johnny? Um, they'll say, no, 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 I didn't, because they're frightened of a punishment. Because to go through the mediation process, they're going to be far more honest with, with a youth mediator. Uh, my son's not being bullied anymore uh, and uh, he seems to be quite happy at school. You know I've, I've been at the school for eight years, eight to nine years, so I've known the sixth form mediators as year seven students um, and so to watch them grow as people with their increased skill set is hugely, hugely um, rewarding. Before I started mediation I was really quite impatient and like I got fed up and I like made preconceptions about people, but it's totally changed how I am as a person now. A couple of months after I, I joined mediation, I got a job and it did help me prepare for that as well. It felt, you know, sort of, I knew how to act in the workplace. Um, it gave me a lot of skills that I could use in the workplace as well, like uh, sorting out conflicts within the workplace and things like that. It's been a big tool for me. It also allows them the opportunity to um, apply to university on the basis of, of their, you know, role as a mediator. And, um, and really, in a sense, it gives them their USP. It makes them special, it makes them different from other candidates who are obviously applying to university places. And both of our head boy and head girl this year are both trained mediators. We knew at the time that uh, young people that's involved in conflict would find the benefits of having a mediator of a similar age group to them. What we never anticipated was the effect and how impressed the adult population that was coming across the issues mediators would be. Parents of young people involved in conflict could see the opportunities and benefits of having youth mediators work in the community. I've never really done any sort of uh, voluntary style work in the community or anything like that. So I wanted to get involved. It just seemed like a very good, uh, stable service to be a part of. What we realised was they would run their own project within that school, so they resolve any conflicts that are happening, any bullying, fights, exclusions, and get involved with that. But we soon realised that we had a team of 20 young people that were highly experienced. Some of these young people were working more hours volunteering than our adult mediators. And we realised there was an opportunity to not only have these young people mediating in their school, but actually getting them to join us outside school, um, out of school hours, working on cases in the community that involved young people. To be able to be a part of a team that feels professional and is working for something good in the community as well uh, have been really fantastic for me. It's also helped me focus my work because of the, the professional side to it. The situation we're in at the moment is this project has been incredibly successful and the pilot has now come to an end um, and what we're looking for is some investment to keep that going. This is a project that's achieved 11 awards nationally and internationally um, over the last four years of piloting this project. What we're looking for is people that are prepared to invest in this. The service that we provide very much fits in with the big society concept that the government currently are pursuing. Um, We've got about 30 volunteers, I'd say, possibly more, on our books. But what we need to have is a core number of staff, maybe not more than about four or five people, that can manage those volunteers and run the day-to-day -day activities of the centre and also provide a degree of additional experience. I know Southwark Mediation has obviously come to a critical time in their life. They need investment now. I can only talk to my experience in school, but I do know that their service extends far beyond that workplaces, community. Um, if, if you're thinking about uh, looking into this service, I would strongly recommend that you do that. If you'd like to speak to me personally about, you know, more in detail, if you're a school, um, I'm more than happy to do that. But I would urge you to consider them, meet them, and then make your decision because 
I, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Uh, due to the recession, due to the recent cuts, the centre itself has had its core funding taken away. So we're now running on one or two smaller contracts uh, combined with um, some spot purchasing of some workplace work that we're doing, which means that our core team has had to be let go. There is nobody there now working um, on a full-time capacity. Everybody's working in a voluntary uh, situation. Over, if that continues over any great length of time, it will undermine, I think, the activities of the centre because people that are there will need to move away in order to get other jobs, in order to pay their bills, in, in, you know, their, their own expenses. So I, I think there's a crisis looming, if it's not already upon us, whereby organisations like Southwark Mediation, without guaranteed core funding, will struggle to survive in order to actually fulfil the ambitions of the big society concept. I think it would be great to have a lot more mediators in the world. There will probably be no more wars, <laughs> no more conflicts between countries. Um, it will be just something that will help people to realise to be a bit more empathetic with people in the world so that people will be able to be in other people's shoes and see how other people are suffering. And it will just be an eye-opener to a lot of people. So I think um, having more mediators in the world will be a great thing.